Oh. So today, I want to talk about something that's very simple but yet profound. Okay, why? Because sometimes we miss the simple things. We are titled it waiting on God. Because there are several passages of scripture that absolutely have been ministering to me for the last 7 to 10 days. So, you know, I want to touch on that because I feel that this is where the Lord wants us to go. Right? Some truths do amazing things to us. Okay? God's greatness is magnified by Him working on behalf of His people. Okay? Let's look at this. Acts 17, 25 says, Nor is He served by human hands as though He needs anything. Think about that. Though, nor is He served by human hands. Yeah. Right? This is the type of God we are serving. He's a God that is self-satisfied. Right? He's self-sustained. There's nothing outside of him he needs. Think about that. Nothing. Absolutely nothing outside of him that he needs. You know why we worship? Worship is for us. Come on. Why? Worship helps us to feel his presence. The more we worship, the more we feel his presence. But do you think suddenly God's glory increases on him? No. His glory is absolute. You know, it's not like, God, you know, my singing is so good. Huh? <laughs> right? It does absolutely nothing. There's nothing outside of him that satisfies him. Yes. Think about that, right? So here he's saying so clearly, as so he needed anything. But yet, he... He himself gives to all people life and bread. Right? And all things. He gives. Our God is a God that gives. Right? So we have to position ourselves in the right attitude, in the right framework of thinking to receive. Receive favor. Right? Receive blessing. Receive his goodness. Amen? Amen. Right? Receive his peace. Right? If we position ourselves, <clears throat> there's no reason to have emotional struggle. Yeah. Right? There's no, there's no reason to have questions. Why? Because He gives you answers. Yes. You have a God who has answers. Hallelujah. Who have a God, right? Who, you have a God who can take care of your problems. Yes. That's what He's saying. It's so clear, right? 2 Chronicles 6, 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord roam, do and throw the earth, so that he may show he may right show himself strongly support those whose heart is completely right his. Strongly support those. Have you ever heard of such a thing? God is searching for searching for opportunity to strongly support. Amen. Right, right. Yeah, sometimes you are walking around and say, "Oh Lord, I feel." Lord, I feel incapable. Strongly support. He's waiting to help you. Come on. Strongly support. What does he say? Only, only thing he needs what? Whose heart is completely his. Right? What is he looking for? He's looking for people who love him. Not for religious folks. Yeah, he doesn't care about religious folks. That's what the people around the world who are religious, they're doing all kinds of religious activity. They're doing all kinds of things, all kinds of service, right? But they're detached from God. They can't encounter God. Why? Because their heart's not there. Their heart's not. They, they're not it's not done through love, it's done through works. Right? They do something and then they put their name print, donated by so-and-so family. Have you seen that? I'm telling you, even if you go to certain church circles, you'll see behind the bench. Olden days, I used to see, wow, behind the bench, this family donated the chair, table and chair. I'm not even kidding. There was one time I went to the States in one church, I think late 1800. They buy, they buy the chair space. Okay, that, that chair, the two chairs belong to the family, so that part is locked. The father has a key. But this kind of church is all. I was thinking, my goodness, you buy chair space in church. <laughs> I thought, what kind of church, man? So the guy who don't have that chair behind him, if he stand outside, he's thinking, what Bible is it? <laughs> right? Absolute nonsense, right? Right? So here he says that he strongly supports. Right? It sounds like he's looking for someone to work for.
He's looking for someone to work for. Right? He's so strong, so magnificent, that he's looking for somebody through whom he can show his energy or his powerful. He's looking for vehicles, you know, we, frail, human, right? Vehicles where he can show his glory. And all he's expecting is receive praise. That's all. Because there's nothing you can do to satisfy him. Come on, nothing, 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 right? No offering you can give that's, that's God goes, wow, right? Come on. No offering, no action. It's basically, he wants to show himself through you. And the greatest thing you can do is that, thank you, Father. Right? So what does he want? This is what he wants. He wants somebody all day, that every turn of your life, thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Every turn, thank you, Lord. Amen. Right? The complaining becomes less, the praising becomes more. That's right. And eventually, the complaining disappears. That's the distinction of a believer. Right? The worrying disappears. There's no room, reason to worry. Why? Because God always shows up. God always shows up. Why? Because you expect Him to show up. Hallelujah. But this is the passage of scripture I want to get into. Right? Isaiah. But before Isaiah, let's read Psalms 50 verse 15. Call on and I will deliver you. And you will glorify me. Right? When we call, right? He says, I will deliver. I will deliver. Okay? I never forgot one of the most scariest experiences I had in my life when I was 16 years old. Drowning in Gunung Tahan. Tahan. I was going down that river. Game over. Never forgot that experience. It's for me. It's like yesterday. You know, I said, Lord, if you are available, it's a good time for you to show up. You know, I thought I was going to die. Absolutely going to die. You know, and I remember when Jesus tapped me on my shoulder and I turned around. He was there. And he said, "You'll die one day, but today is not that day." Every time November comes, I'm always reminded because it was. November the 12th, when that happened. I'm always reminded, you know, 16 years old. Call on me, and I will deliver. Hallelujah. Okay? For me, it's a reality. I'm still breathing because he rescued me from that river. You know, when my friends were swimming away, I said, my goodness, wonderful friends I have. <laughs> you know, I was about to die here, but Jesus showed up. Amen. Amen. Never abandons you. Never forsakes you. Amen. Are you seeing this? Amen. Amen. Right? If, if, he's, if he is not making the connection with you, then there's probably because you're not seeking him. Yeah. Or you're not seeking him with the way you are supposed to seek him. Yeah. Amen. So the passage of scripture this morning I want to look at narrow in is in Isaiah 64. Right? 1 to 4. Right, so let's, because of time, let's go down to verse 3. Right, when you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectation. And oh, how the mountains quake. Verse 4, for since the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you. Who works for those who wait for him. Amen. Okay. He's making a distinction here. Isaiah is making a distinction. He says, from the time the world began, no ear has heard, no eye has seen. A God who is like you. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a distinction. Come on. There's a distinction. Right? I know, I know it's a very sensitive subject in Singapore. But guess what? It's a distinction. Come on. Our job is not to Condemn anything out there. But our job is to recognize the distinction. Amen. Come on. There is no God like our God. Amen. Come on. Right? Our God is a real God. Amen. 
Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Right? This is what our foundation is built on. Right? He says, a God who works for those who wait on Him. Right? So, I, you know, I, I went to look at the Hebrew. I went to look at the lexicon. I went to look at all the root meaning. Right? I only came back with this conclusion. Okay? Works means works. Huh? Right? Works means labor. He actually works. Because I couldn't phantom that. God works for you. I thought I worked for you. Right? No. God works for those who wait on Him. Amen. He moves on behalf of those who trust Him. Amen. Come on. He comes. You know, the picture Isaiah... Isaiah paints, you know, the picture in Exodus, it paints where he comes like this mother eagle to scoop up the baby eagle just before it hits the ground. Right? In eagle swings, he says, I will come and rescue you. Amazing picture. Amazing picture. Why? Because in order for the mother eagle to equip the baby eagle, eagle it pushes the eagle off the nest. Right? Pushes it off. You know, and the baby, baby eagle is falling. And he's thinking, my mother is nuts. <laughs> Ate the wrong laksa today. <laughs> Why is she killing me? Right? You know, I had this nice, beautiful, comfortable, you know, sea view. Have you seen eagle's nest? Yeah, in Arizona, the desert, there's a lot of eagle's nest. You know, it's usually on the highest place, right? Hey, sea view. Then one day the mother comes... Right? What's Xiao Liao? What's wrong with this woman, man? So the baby eagle is like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. Then the mother eagle flies at lightning speed, scoops up, bring the baby eagle back to the nest. And the baby eagle, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Today never died. Okay? Mother got her senses. And then the mother turned again. Oh no. Same look. Right? Again. <laughs> right? So the baby eagle said, right? One time you tried to kill me, accident. Two time, murder. <laughs> right? Again going to die. And then the mother eagle again scoops. And they say, you know what? The mother eagle will, eagle, eagle will do this until the baby eagle coming down, right? Starts. <laughs> Oh, I was wondering what this was for. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Huh? Actually, this one works. Huh? <laughs> oh, see? So the mother eagle does that until the baby eagle recognizes. I can fly. Just like her. Right? The Lord comes and works so powerfully. Right? So let's go, let's go a little bit deeper to understand this, right? Number one, right? We want to see a few things about our God. Number one, there's a uniqueness okay, of this God. No, I have seen a God who acts like this, right? Isaiah also talks about the differentiation between Baal and Nebo, which were gods of Egypt. Right? He gives a comparison. Isaiah 46, 1 to 4. He says, Bell bows down, Nebo stoops. Their idols were on bees and on cattle. Your carriages were heavily loaded, a burden to the weary bees. They stooped, they bow down together. They could not deliver the burden, but they themselves gone into captivity. So here Isaiah is comparing. He says, you know, our God is a different God. Yes. Different type of God. Why? Because he doesn't have to be put on an animal. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? First of all, the, you know, the animal has to carry this God. Think about that. Yeah. Right? What he's saying is, these other gods, you have to work for them. Yeah, you have to do things for them. You have to carry their burden. Think about that. It's true. True. He's painting a, a, an amazing picture. And then he says in verse 3, Listen to me, O Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel who have been upheld by me from birth. Whoa. That makes a distinction. Okay? You didn't carry me. I carried you. From the time you were born, I carried you. 
who have been carried from the womb. Right? We think our mother carried that physically, but God is the actual one who carried that. Come on. How many women, you know, lose the baby in the summer? Countless. Right? I know a lady in Malaysia eat too much durian. Baby died. Literally. Because the sugar went up. Literally. Literally. Okay? I don't know Musan King or what lah. Right? Must be lah, Musan King. Right? But as I said, you know, she, she has a consciousness, she has a care, but nobody has a care like God. Come on. Right? Why? She doesn't have a control how, how the development is. But God designed it. Right? To ensure that when you were born, you didn't have three eyes. And one ear in the center. Right? Look like an alien. Right? Never. God did that. Right? So he's saying, I carried you. Right? Look at this. Verse 4. Even to your old age, I am he. Even to your gray hairs, I will carry you. From the womb to the grave, I carry you. Wow. Wow. Right? And I will bear you. Even I will carry you. And I will deliver you. How is the difference like idols on bees? Right? They cannot carry the burden. They carry hands. I will carry you. Gray hands. Right? So here he says what? Six times he says, I will carry you. I carry you. I carry you. I carry you. I carry you. Wow. Right? Come on, man. That should shut all our complaints. Yes. Right? I don't know about you. Shut all my complaints. Right? Shut all my murmurs. Shut all my doubts. Why? He said, I'll carry you. From the womb, when I had absolutely no control, to my old age, when I lose all my strength. He says, I will carry you. Right? What a distinction between idols. Guess what? You have to do. 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 Right? You know? I was an ex, you know, I was an ex-Catholic. Right? One of the things in the Catholic institution that they came up with is something called penance. You know, in history, you're going to read church history. Right? The family has the last cow. The family cow. And here they have to give the cow, sacrifice a cow, because the father died. And in order for the mass to be said, they have to give the cow. Religion. Religion. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that all over. It's like that all over. But God is saying here, I'm not like that. Yeah. I am not like that. I carry you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I bear your burden. From start to finish, I carry you. Amen? So there's a uniqueness about our God. Right? The way of salvation in every religion, right, is work for me. But here the triune God says, I will carry you. Right? We have a God who works for us. Isaiah 30, 18 says, Therefore, the Lord will wait. He will be gracious to you. Therefore, He will be exalted when He has mercy on you. Look at that. Amen. What it basically is saying is that here we have a God who is exalted, but He will come down to your level and show you mercy. Amen. And all He expects in exchange is an exaltation. God, you did it. You did it. I didn't do this. You did it. You provided. You broke through. You sustained. Come on, right? So it says that he will he will lower himself. Let me wish God lowered himself. Right? Yeah, there's no there's no copper plated God. All want to be gold plated. Right? Saddest thing, you know, saddest thing. People already know money, have to go and plate, plate. Give more gold, give more gold so they can plate and plate and plate. Right? Isn't that sad? Yeah. Right? But here he's saying, you know what? Right? There's a huge distinction. I come down to your level. I come down to your level to show you mercy. I come down to your level to reach you where you are. Right? Whatever state you are, I come down there. Right? And then the part he adds again, right? Twice. He says it. Beginning and end. For those who wait for me. Amen. He's repeating himself. Okay? The, the blessed thing about Christianity that I love is this. Okay? We do minimum, our God does maximum. Amen. That's right. Minimum. Come on. What is 10%? Minimum. 
Right? What's prayer? Minimum. What's worship? Minimum. Right? It's never maximum. He does maximum. Amen. What's maximum? The cross of Calvary. Yes. Come on. Right? Some of us cannot even stand the toenail being pulled. One toenail scream like <laughs> life and death. Right? Right? He takes the maximum. Gives you the minimum. I became poor. You become rich. I was bruised. You become healed. Amen. Right? What does religion does? You get bruised and I look good. Come on, look at the distinction. Right? Go bruise yourself. Go beat yourself. Come on. Right? Religion, religion brings injury to you. Why? Because it's built on works. It's my effort. My effort. No. Our God is saying, it's not your effort, it's my effort. Right? Your effort, wait on me. Wait on me. Yeah. Wait on me. If you wait on me, I move. Okay. You know, I don't get this. I don't get this. How can we get this wrong? How can we how can we get this wrong? You know, the key is the key is so simple. The key is so easy. What he's saying is if you just take time every day, set it aside. Way before you go out for your work. Way before you get involved in your activity. Just set aside. Quieten yourself. Just wait. I'll start moving. I'll start showing you mercy. My favor will come on you. My blessing will come on you. How can we miss this? Recite, right? <laughs> 20 books of Isaiah. Right? You got to recite Psalms 1 to 119. Scared. Right? No, there's nothing like that. You're just saying that I will move on your behalf. You just take time. You just give me time. You just give me priority in the middle of your day. If you just give me focus, if you just sensitize your heart with me, I'll stop moving on your behalf. Wow! Church, this is not New Testament, this is Old Testament. How did those idiots miss it? I don't know, I like to find out. Right? Imagine New Testament. Old Testament, they didn't even have an urging. New Testament, we got an urging called the Holy Spirit who comes and urges us. Who comes and you know, whispers and reminds us, hey guy, wait. Yeah. Right? Pray. Right? Here is a God who comes to me in an undeserving nature by treating me better than I deserve. Right? So Jesus gives an example here. There's an example here in the New Testament. Mark chapter 10, verse 35. Okay? Story, the first part. Right? The sons of that Zebedee, James and John, wanted a position in the coming kingdom. You know, these guys, something else, right? They, they said, Lord, when you come, we grant us to sit on your right and on your left. Right? So, long story short, the disciples got mad because they found out that these guys, okay, it says in verse 41, right? The ten heard and they were greatly displeased with the request of James and John. Right? Because they wanted position. Right? They wanted to be great in Christ's kingdom. Then Jesus answers them and says this, verse 42. He called them to himself and he said, You know that those who are considered rulers over Gentiles lord it over, over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them. Verse 43. Yet it shall not be so among you. For whosoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever desires to be first shall be a slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but serve, but to serve and to right, lay his life as a ransom. That part is cut off. Right? 
He laid his life as a ransom. He did not only come to serve, he came to die. Amen. Think about that. So here Jesus is painting a distinction. He says, what you are following guys is different. Because the rulers of this world, they exercise authority and they expect everybody to serve them. Yeah, right. right? But it shall not be like that in my father's kingdom. Yes. It shall not be like that right, in my father's rulership. Because in my father's rulership, the design is, I came to serve. Amen. Come on. I not only came to serve, I came to die. Wow. Wow. Get this picture. Get this picture. Right? So Christianity here, the true picture of Christianity is what? Right? The more, the more you get closer to God, the more you serve. Right? The more you get closer to God, the more, right, you become a reflection, a light, right, of the service of God. Come on. This is the picture he's painting. He says, don't be like the world. Why? Because the world, the more authority it has, the more it wants people to serve. Yeah. Right. I, I remember I was in one, uh, preaching in one place in Bali. And I think this is probably the most incredible house I've ever stayed in. This pastor had, this pastor had, this, he had eight servants. In the house. Eight. I've never heard anybody eight servants. Of course, in Indonesia, you can have hundred <laughs> not very expensive right so when I went to the house you know they said that these two will, two of them will serve you for a few days I said two you know my goodness every time I turn wondering every time I turn got something coming non-stop you know I mean it was it was amazing but I was you know I was thinking wow right what happens you know what happens when right you are constantly receiving. What happens? Right? When you are constantly receiving, you'll stop giving. Come on, think about it. Right? If you're always, it's always one way, what happens to you? It doesn't make you a better person, it makes you a selfish person. Right? It makes you a self-centered person because all your life you just receive, 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 receive. So here Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven doesn't function like that. The kingdom of heaven functions by us serving. By us being the ones who sacrifice. By us being the ones, right, who are willingly to pour our lives for the sake of others. Right? So here in the New Testament, he's painting the same picture what Isaiah painted about God in the Old Testament. A God who's looking for ways to serve. A God who's looking for ways to work on behalf of his people. Right? So this is very clear. Very, very clear. Right? Both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Right? Not number one, but number two. That's a competence of the work of God. Right? Right? First is there was a uniqueness of the work of God. Number two, there's a competence of the work of God. That means, whatever God does, He does perfectly. Amen. Come on, He does perfectly. Right? There, are, there are reasons that humans are incompetent. Right? They're just workers. Sometimes, right? The boss is not around, the work is substandard. Right? Uh, how many of you had, you know, dealings with certain companies? I don't know why they like to come back a few times. Right? First time, they cannot settle it. For some reason, they always have to come back a few times. And I always think, why don't you settle the first time? So I don't have to see you and you don't have to see me. Right? But why? The attitude is this. This is not my brand, man. This is not my company. Why I care? Right? This is the attitude. Right? But God operates out. God operates. This is my brand. Right? This represents who I am. Yes. Right? Look at it. Whether you like it or not, whether you're a believer or not a believer, you know one thing. Right? About 7 in the morning when you wake up, right? Moon disappear, sun's already here. Right? 
Do you ever get up on me and say, oh, today the sun never show up? <laughs> holiday. Right? Is the universe on holiday? Never! Absolutely never! That's the confidence of God. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Absolute confidence of God. You know, you know over here, it's, you know, because of our pollution and stuff like that, if you go to a desert, one of the most astounding things about a desert, especially in the middle of the night, right? If you go to the desert, you see the stuff. Sky is flooded. It starts. We can't see it here because of our pollution. You know, also, island. You know, but if you go to those places that, you know, natural beauty, you will see. Just, you just stand there. Wow. Really, there are so many stars. Right. It's astounding. Why? Because God's competent, perfect in the way He does things. See, so when we see that, we should be reminded, our God is perfect. Amen. When He says He will come through, means what? He will come through. Amen. If you don't see Him in your life, it's got nothing to do with Him. It's got to do with you. I remember one time somebody asked Reinhard Bonke, how come some people you pray heal, some not heal? He said, there's only two reasons. One is me, the other one is the person. He said, it's never God. Amen. Because healing is already done. This vehicle or that vehicle. Maybe this morning I got up on the wrong side of the bed. This one never left the bed. (laughs) Simple answer, right? Truth answer. But what do we do? We blame God. Stupid answer. Stupid answer. That's the most dumbest answer you and I can give. Oh, God didn't show up. Maybe God's power is not available. Go read your Bible, man. Yeah. Come on. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? There's no flaw in our God. Amen. It's perfection. Yes. Come on, it's perfection. Hallelujah. Right? You know, we, we, are, only, we are only discovering what God has already Put in place. Yes. You know, like for example, you know, I, I was sharing in Indonesia, I was sharing a couple of places, you know. This year in April 22, they discovered that star called Arendo. Came out in NASA's, you know, publication. And I was like, wow, they discovered this new star. So I started studying about it, started reading more about it. Arendo. I said, wow, what's the distinction? They said they found a star. Before that, they only found a star that went back uh, 6.9 billion years. Or 8.9 billion years. And that star was just one of the stars among others. But when they found a Randall, they realized was it was a star that was from 12.9 billion years. And also what they discovered about this star was this was the beginning of stars. They said this was the beginning of stars. That's why they gave the name a Randall. Because a Randall means morning star. Isn't that crazy? Why? Because Jesus is the morning star. Jesus is the morning star. What does the Bible say? He's the beginning and the end. So now the world is like, we are a random. They cannot even disagree because they have to call it the morning star because it was the beginning of stars. It took us 2022. To discover. Let me tell you when Arendel showed up. You know when Arendel showed up? Arendel showed up on Christmas night. When those three wise men were following what? Arendel. They were following the morning star. Leading them to the morning star. Remember that star was unusual. The Bible talks about it. Unusual. Why? Because this star moved. How, many, how long were they following? Is it somewhere between a year to six months? They're following this star. Right? We are only discovering it now. Why? Because now we have better equipment, better lenses, so they can spot this thing out there. Isn't that incredible? And the other thing, that, the other fact that was astounding by the scientific community was that 
they are concluding right now that the universe is expanding. It's not shrinking. It's expanding. It's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Hallelujah. Right? Among many reasons. One of the reasons why you know it's expanding? Why? You're all quiet. Why is it expanding? Among many reasons. Why is it expanding? Why? Come on. Anybody? Q and A. Better telescope. It's true, right? Because we have better technology to discover it, right? But it says that, see, it has it has this thing called red shift. Behind the stars, they see this tail called the red shift. The red shift is a description that it is becoming bigger. Right? That means what it shows is that, remember Jesus said. I go to prepare a place for you. Right? So from the beginning of creation till today, guess what? There are more people going to heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. More people that are going to heaven. And what did Jesus say? Right? We will be what? Kings and priests. That means we will be, we will be in God's expanded universe. Right? We are going to be positioned in different parts of the universe where we will reflect God. So God is constantly expanding. Why? Because His authority over our lives and over humanity is expanding. Millions and millions and millions are getting saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen? Right? So, you know, it's a very powerful description here. So let's go on here. The competent work. There's a Right? Our ability is limited, but God's ability is not limited. Isaiah 46, 9 says, Remember not the former things of old, for I am God. There's no other. I am God, and there's none like me. Verse 10, he says, Declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, that are not yet done, my counsel shall stand. My counsel shall stand. Hallelujah. That means what he decides cannot be changed. Hallelujah. Amen? Right? He says, there's none, nobody like me. See? That's why, you know, you and I as a believer, we should be, one of the things that we should be the most proud about is that we are a follower of Jesus. Right? Are you a Christian? Don't say so loud. (laughs) Right? Which church you go to? <laughs> she be proud, man. I'm a believer. Hallelujah. Amen. I know an awesome father. Right? What did Jesus say? If you are proud before men, right, of who I am, I'll be proud before my father. You don't declare me, I won't declare you. Come on, right? So, here he's saying, right, everything is accomplished according to what? According to who God is. Right? He does it for those who wait for Him. Right? Isaiah 64, right? Read that again. He works for those who wait for Him. So what is the prerequisite for waiting? Right? For Him. Right? X 14, 16 again. He says, Nevertheless, He did not leave himself without a witness in that he is good. Gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season, filling our hearts with food and gladness. What is the prerequisite? Right? There's there's two types of grace that we see. Two types of grace. Right? This is classified as some kind of, not come grace, but common grace. Right? Classified as a common grace. Right? The word there is a mistype. Typo there. He does that for everyone, right? The first type of grace is common grace, like sunshine, like rain, right? You don't have to be a believer to experience it. Anybody can experience it, right? Right? It it doesn't matter, right? Like in the morning, uh, what happens, right? In the evening, what happens? So he works for people who don't even care about him, right? I'm sure there are believers out there, when the sun comes out in the morning, they don't get up and say, thank you, God. They don't. You know what they say? They say that the Big Bang made the sun. You're an idiot. That's all I can say. 
what big bang can create such perfection you know maybe your relative came from monkey mind didn't right that's your own conclusion that's your choice right that's what they assume it to be you know how can how can just a cell make a body not possible right with all the advancement of the science and technology we can create anything right we cannot perfect what god is perfected you know so so what what the scripture here is saying is that there's something called common grace okay which everybody experiences but those who wait for him have what we call special grace right that's why the world doesn't experience special grace when a danger comes immediately they cannot stop it when trouble comes they cannot stop it Are you seeing this right there was a there's a there's a you know several testimonies i've heard where men have you know committed heavy crimes and they've been sentenced to death i remember this one case I forgot the person's name sentenced to death and he was brought to the gallows you know to be hung but when he is hung uh the the device that they use fails and according to the law they can only hang hang him one time and they release him because the night before he encountered god and god saved him right but you see most people who live under common grace don't see special grace yeah come on good people kind people nice people right lovely people as matter they only have the capacity to experience common grace not special grace this is a distinction why because you and i have a capacity to experience special grace this is what scripture is saying here right is giving a description isaiah 31 verse 1 what sorrows await for those who look to egypt for help trusting their horses chariots the charities right depending on the strength of human armies instead of looking to the lord the holy one of israel right our first reflex is what when trouble comes right our first reflex right must not be the world but unfortunately our first reflex is always the world yeah. running to people should not be our right first insisting right our first action rather right One of the reasons we forfeit divine engagement in our life is because we trust in the strength of our arm. When trouble comes the first thing we do is who can I call for help? Huh? Who is the person who is supposed to volunteer help? Wrong, wrong and wrong. Why? That's the arm of the flesh. Isaiah is saying here, what do you do? You run after the chariot. you ran after the horses right because in his day that was the most powerful weapon yes. right but there will be something else right f35 or something else right you know some kind of powerful weapon of today right we so when we when we do that what i say is saying here is that we forfeit divine engagement we try everything Still waiting. Why? Because we are in a hurry. Uh, God takes a little, little long. He's not answering me as quickly as I want. Right? Come on. Right? A lady prays for her husband. Right? Because when she starts praying, she gives description. Wait, wait, wait. No answer. After that, she says, "What? Well, God, just send me any man." Right? Why? Because we get desperate. We move away from the trust. I heard this powerful testimony of this lady who prayed years ago, years, years ago. 
Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Prayer boy was a crazy prayer she prayed. She prayed a guy had to play violin, had to drive a green car, curly hair. <laughs> so specific, you know. So specific. You know? And she trusted God. That was his difference. She absolutely trusted God and just waited. Okay? That was the key. She waited. You know what happened? She met a guy, curly hair, drove a green car, played the violin. Wow. Not 90%, 100%. Wow. Because she waited. She did not go her own way, her own idea, so God allowed that to happen. Right? We fail to tune into God before, right, we make a decision. Right? We, we are always in a hurry. And Isaiah goes on further. Right? So what is he saying, number one? He's saying that prayer, we have to pause. Right? The first part of prayer is that we have to pause. We have to wait. When we hear something, we wait. Right? Whether good decision, bad decision, we wait. Right? Instead of already stepping into it and then saying, it's God's will. Really? Right? It's God's will. One week later, divorce. Really? Huh? The best part is this. You know, God really led me to this company. You know, I heard so many times. Wow, my boss, huh? Fantastic. Yeah, give him about a week. See how, Right? Moses turned to Pharaoh. <laughs> I've always heard this. You know, wow, my supervisor is so nice. Really? Good for you. God bless you. Right? The excitement. Guess what happens? After three months. Cannot stand my supervisor. Right? How come this work is so horrible? How come God led me? I, God led you. Everything changed. Why? Because before you went in, you never pause. Right? Lord, give me patience, but make it now. <laughs> right? Why? Because we are instant noodle society. And the thing is, now it's faster. You know, last time even the microwave take a little bit longer. Now it's super fast. What, the new microwave? was the brand? Right? You got this new brand now. Right? Two, few seconds. Boom, done. Why? Because people cannot wait. Yeah. Cannot wait. Right? Right? They stand in a queue. You know, one thing I admire Singaporeans. <laughs> that, that one is amazing. That one I haven't seen in too many societies. <laughs> oh, they can queue. One chicken rice all the way outside. Okay. The best one was McDonald's toy. The parents can queue on 8 o'clock. <laughs> I'm more queue one time I saw. I used to go for early morning work. I said, what? Well, you're outside. And all the auntie, uncle, father, mother. Why? Because new toy release. Collector edition. Tell you, the kids are rats. <laughs> My goodness. Right? Can you imagine the kids going to queue for the parent? Introduce one child to me. <laughs> I give uncle. I give uncle. Right? Never one. You know, you know when they will start queuing when they have their own children. Then they realize, oh, actually, mom and dad was very kind. <laughs> How they handled me. Huh? Right? So here, Isaiah is, you know, breaking it down. Right? He's saying, you know what? You have to pause and consult in prayer. And then number two, he's saying, you know what? You have to, sh you have to decide whether I stand still or I go for it. I have to learn to hear, Lord, when I, after I pause, right? When I pause, the next is the action. What is the action going to be like? Because by me pausing, I'm tuning myself to listen to you. Right? Remember David, under the mulberry tree. His entire army was there. Wait. Right? Yes. And all these mighty men, you know, these were powerful guys. And they're like, what, what are you waiting for? Waiting for the leaf to move. <laughs> Something wrong with you, is it? <laughs> Leave to move? Yeah, because that's what God told me. That's right. That's what He told me. Yeah. Wow. Can you imagine? Right? Wow. Pause. 
So God will tell you. Yes. He will tell you whether I drive it or as you move, I drive it. Yes. Two ways. Understand this. Right? Whether you got nothing to do with it, wait for me to move. Just step aside. There's nothing you can do. Just be still and just, you know, enjoy my presence. Well, the second way is, as you move, I also move with you. Because every step you move, I will give you a key, a key, a key. See? So this is why Isaiah is saying here. So let's read this. Right? Isaiah 30, 15. In what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. Right? So, in order for God to move, number one, one of the things that we have to do is that we have come to the place when we say pause means I rest in your wisdom. Amen. Amen. I dissolve my wisdom. Amen. I disagree with my idea. Amen. Why? Because that's our human tendency. Yeah, that's right. I am so smart in myself. I have the best ideas, best solution. Although I made a lot of blunder. Maybe this one might be better. Right? Shut that door. Even as smart as it sounds, shut it. Yeah, this is what he's saying. That I rest means I bury my emotion in his emotion. Amen. Right? What is your emotion? Your emotion is now I want the answer, Lord. God will not give you the answer because he brought you there for an experience, not for an answer. Yeah. Come on. Why did he bring you there? It's called experience. Not answer. Okay? Early days we used to have this thing called tikka. You know? So I'm on a big board and all these red patches. Don't know where the price. You pay five cents, let you tear one time. <laughs> right? Fifteen cents, tear three times. Got all the money, you can tear everything up. But by the time you tear everything, the price is cheaper. Right? No such thing. The goal is, you know why? He wants you to grow. Yeah. Say, Lord, why is this experience so hard? Growing time. Yes. Come on. I can tell you that. Right? You grow. You have to mature. Why? Because he wants to bring you to a new season. If you don't grow, you don't mature, you cannot handle a new season. No, it's not easy. Okay? Think the last season was easy? Just wait for the next one. Because the next one is going to be even more challenging. It's even more challenging. Even more challenging. Right? You know, when I first went out to missions, it wasn't easy. I remember all my excitement, all my zeal when I landed in Hong Kong. I said, I kill. Why did I come here? I thought I was Hudson Taylor. All disappeared. <laughs> you know, Hong Kong's a great city. I love it. But I was like, <laughs> you know, being thrown in a city where you don't understand them. You don't understand their culture. You know, you have to adapt. But you know, I didn't know. That was only introduction. That was 30 years ago. That was only introduction. My God. Different phases of life that you go through. Right? You go through so many different challenges. Job challenge, you know, health challenge, financial challenge, relational challenge, family challenge. Every one of those are what? New experiences. Yes. Right? And then you say, well, my last experience, you know, I got the key, man. Sorry, la. next one got new key. You've got to go back and say, oh, yeah, last one was great, but I found out all my ideas were stupid. Okay? But then let me shut up. Rest means, you know what? Rest means he move, I watch. Hallelujah. Rest means I trust him so much, I am not born. That's rest. Amen. Right? Have you ever seen this picture? I love this picture, right? This little child, right? Stands at the edge of the pool and the father is there with the hand stretched out. You know? Little child, sure jump. When they become 10 years old, they say, Father can catch on you. 
Not too heavy, you too weak. Right? But when they are young, guess what happened? They were just young. I remember my kids when they are young. My goodness, without a turning or a jump. Especially my second daughter. My goodness, she's like, hey, steady. I'm not that strong, you know. Why? Because there's a level of rest. You know? I used to tell my, my, my daughter all kinds of stories and she used to believe. Now she don't believe anything. <laughs> One time she asked me, Dad, why you got this marquee on tiger, tiger? Fight with tiger. <laughs> wow, Dad, tiger! Wow, you work in zoo? Ah? <laughs> and now she said, Dad, you always tell me all those stupid stories. Right? <laughs> hero becomes hero. Right? So here he's saying, okay, he's saying, that reliance means that rest. And he breaks it down so beautifully. Right? He said, verse 16, No, we will get our help from Egypt. They will give us swift horses for riding into battle. But the only swiftness you are going to see is the swiftness of your enemy. The Lord said, you trust their horses, you trust their battle weapons, what you're going to see is that they're going to turn against you. Because I'm not there. See, we build our security. We say, you know what? Now I'm secure. I've got this job that's so secure. You know, you know, my, I, I put my reliance now on my job. I shift my allegiance. Yeah. Don't we do that? Yeah. Come on. You know, if you work in the civil service, you know, we always say this, I am rice bowl. Yeah. You work in the army, I am rice bowl. Right? No matter what happens, we are set. No, you're not set. The only reason you're set is because God allowed you to be set. Amen. God gave you that place. Amen. God gave you that security. So what Isaiah is saying is that they shift their trust. They shifted their hope. Right? He says, one of them will chase a thousand of you. You, instead of becoming strength, you will become weakness. This is what he's saying. Why? Because you did not me. You did not put your reliance on me. Come on. Right? So he's, he's, he's giving us specific direction. Right? Moses, Exodus 14 and 13. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm. See the deliverance of the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. Where were the Egyptians? Just quite close. They can see the dust in the desert. The army was coming. And Moses is saying, See, you will not see them ever again. One against close to 3 million people. 2.5 to 3 million people. They're all murmuring. Why you brought us here to die? He says, you, The one you see, you will not see again. It's not win confession. This is not hope. This is rest. Amen. You know, and you know, yes. and you know, and you know. Why you know? Because you've already waited. You have already waited, and He has already concluded. So when we, when we go and pray for somebody, we know. We know. And we release that word. We speak it over. Not presumption, but because we know. We know. Okay? Because God's promise was on the inside, released to you. Yes. As you were waiting. See, you, you tune yourself. Right? Even with the job situation. Tune yourself, you know. Companies says, oh, we're going we're gonna to lay off people. But you are praying and the Lord says, it's not, you're not going to be on the list. Amen. You're not going to be on the list. So what do you do? You rest. Yes. Hallelujah. You rest. Why? Because you know 
your name is not on the list. Yes. This is not your time. That bad news is not your bad news. Yeah. Your news is still good news. Right? So verse 14, he says, the Lord will fight for you. And that's all you have to do. Keep still. Keep still. Only be still. Right? God says, just wait. So sometimes while you are, you know, while you are leaning on the Lord, you are at this place of rest, He will tell you, the next step, you do nothing. You just wait. Yes. Because it's so impossible for you to even do anything. It's impossible, right, for you to use the arm of the flesh or your own ideas or your own methods. The only thing you can do is wait for me to move. Right? Wait for me to perform. I remember during the tsunami, one of the tremendous miracles that happened in Sri Lanka, right? This family was all at work and they left their grandmother back in the village in the house. And this was by the water. Okay? But the grandmother was a prayerful woman. So what happened? Right? When the tsunami hit, she started praying in the spirit. Okay? When she started praying in the spirit, the water came in. Right? The water lifted her bed. Lifted her bed. Lifted her bed. Lifted her bed. All the way almost to the roof. She's just praying in the spirit. So the family was at work. They say, finish. Grandmother did. There is no way... We come back, she will be alive, right? By the time they came back, the water had receded, she's back on ground. <laughs> right? They came back, they were shocked. They said, How did you survive? No way, because the water, the house is destroyed. They can see the water mark. And she said, I pray. Become Noah's ark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Amen. Be still. So when you wait, God will say what? Be still. Lord, I don't have the finances to pay this bill. Be still. Let Him move. Amen. Lord, I don't have a solution for this problem. Be still. Don't call people. Are you with me? Don't run after this person, that person. Why? The person will discourage you. What they say will kill you. Will not help you. Yes. Come on. What you are expecting is not going to come out of your mouth. God says, just be still and I'll take care of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So what do you have to do? You just have to shut yourself down and say, I'm just waiting. Amen. I'm not going to tell anybody. Right? I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm not going to trust anybody. I'm just going to trust you. Amen. I'm just going to wait on you. Amen. Amen. Right? The second one that we see here. Right? Right? You stop waiting on the way and start acting another way. Right? In the midst of what you are doing, he intervenes. Right? Your job situation is not right? working. Right? Don't quit. Allow God to work in that situation. Like for example, right? you go to work, you are being bullied. You are being harassed. Right? Every job you go, it becomes a bad situation. So what do you do? Run now. Right? 40 years for 40 job. <laughs> Cannot be. Cannot be, cannot be. Right? What it shows is nothing to do with the job, it's you. Come on, God's not training you to be a job expert. Right? Have a collect application form. No! Come on, figure this out. Right? What is he trying to do? He's trying to teach you that you know what? Even in the ugly situation, I can turn their hearts. The person that hates you will become the person that likes you. Right? Same God. Why you cannot trust the other way? Come on. Why you cannot allow God to change that? So what do you do? It's an awful situation. It's an ugly situation. But you say, Lord, I'm trusting you now. And every day I come, I will just tolerate the nonsense. It's okay. It's okay. They're ugly to me. They're mean to me. They give me the hard job. I'll just faithfully do. Faithfully. Right? Come on. Yes. Bible got so many examples. Joseph. Think about that. Right? Special child. Become clean Potiphar's floor. Clean. 
clean, faithfully clean. Slave got promotion. There's no even such a category. Right? And he even made it better. Prisoner got promotion. He became the chief of prisoner. Why? Because he just faithfully executed. You think he wasn't beaten? You think he wasn't bullied? You think he wasn't harassed? Right? You think he wasn't called names? Come on, all this existed way before. Right? So, it's okay. Come on, we are believers. We should have played greater tolerance, right? See, by, by our fruits, people will know. How come I school this guy? He never react. How come I say these mean things? He never react. Right? You go to a restaurant or you go to a situation, sometimes people are all worked up. You know? And then you just smile at them. You say, it's okay. You know, I've been to some counters, you know, where the, the people get scared. You know, one time I remember, I forgot where, I, where it was exactly the situation, but I was at this counter and I very quietly asked this person, I said, can you help me change that? I think it was a ticket or something. And the person said, today you are the nicest person. <laughs> I said, why? Everybody bank table. And because of that, I will help you. It's like, wow. It pays to be Christian. Yes. It pays to be Christian. It's an honor to God to be a Christian. Right? You know? Why? We live in a society where people have little tolerance. Very little tolerance. I'm the most important person. Okay? Why is this bad? Why is this slow? Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? Why is this? Right? Just a change of attitude here. Right? What does God do? He takes an ugly situation. He turns it off. Right? We see that in Daniel. Ugly situation. Hebrew boys brought in. Slave boys. What did they do? They worked through the situation. Daniel was prime minister of four kingdoms. Four kingdoms. Think about that. Right? Isaiah 40, 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid. I am your God. I will strengthen you. That means what? I will work through you. Through that situation, I will move. Through that impossible situation, he says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. Amen. Huh? In case you didn't get it, I will strengthen you. You didn't get it, I will help you. You didn't get it, I will uphold you. Amen. You still didn't get it, you won't get it. <laughs> right? I'll ask some people to play, pray for our hearing. That's only right. <laughs> He's repeating it. Right? Notice this. Look at the progression. Yeah. Look at the progression. I will first strengthen you. Right? Strengthen. Give you the strength first. Second, I will come and be involved. I will come and be involved. I will help you now. First, I give you the strength. Second, I will help you. Number three, help strengthen you cannot. Help you also cannot. Okay la, I'll hold you la. <laughs> right? Yeah. Look at that. What are you saying? Third part, I just carry you la. No more discussion. Right? You just move hand, I carry leg. You just move hand, everybody see your hand. You know? Just don't get a big head. Look at that picture, man. Amen. Right? Right? It's like a picture of, you know, Ram carrying Keenan around when he was young. <laughs> right? There! Right? Help me there! Right? Give him the strength. Come on, I use you. Come on. Together we carry. Hey, at the end, come on, I carry you. La. Right? And then Keenan only has to hold the ball right there. And then he said, oh, look at me, how strong I am. <laughs> but he don't know his father is the one who's carrying both. The ball and him. Right? The, the person who is bearing the weight is who? God! Amen. Carrying both things! Amen. This is a picture he's painting. He's saying, the second way is, I will be involved. But I will give you gradual strength. Why? Because
because I want to work through you. But if you really, really, really cannot, I will uphold you. Amen. What a God. What a God. Amen. Right? He loves to work for those who wait on Him. Right? Psalms 33, 16 says, A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. Verse 17, The war horse is a vain hope of victory. By his great might he cannot save. Truly the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him. On those who hope in his steadfast love. To deliver their soul from death. To keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us even as we hope in you. Amen. He's saying the war horse cannot save you. Cannot. It's a vain glory, He's saying. Come on, guys. I'm telling you. Telling you what's happening with the economic situation right now. You know what they're saying? They're saying the financial system will collapse. Right? The dollars that we hold. I do not know about Singapore and the States. A dollar right now is only worth 25 cents. Actual value. What you could buy with a dollar, you can't buy now. So what's happening? Right? This paper is devaluing. Notice that? You go to the supermarket, now you buy less. It's devaluing. Right? But the value of God doesn't decrease. That's it. Because economics, economic sustenance doesn't decrease. Amen. Right? This is vain. This is vain. So if we say, you know, oh, I put my trust in this, you're foolish. It's foolish. Why? Because it's going south. Yeah. It's literally going south. Remember what the Bible said about the last days. The last days, we're going to move into a cashless society. Yeah. So what we trust in called a fiat system, it's going to collapse. It's going to collapse. So what will God do? God will give you wisdom. Go put your money here. Right? Shift it here. Come on. There was a pastor here in 1988 before the you know, finance collapse. You know, pastor Rick Siebert has already gone to be with God. I remember in one of the meetings, he told all those people who invested you know, in stocks and all that. He said, go quickly sell. Next three months is going to collapse. All those guys who listened to him, say, those who didn't listen to him, they have the fault. Why? Because it was a prophetic voice. God gave him a discernment. Tell him, take it out. See what I'm saying? Why? See, our trust is not in that. Our trust is in the Lord. And the trust in the Lord, He will even give you wisdom. Where to invest, where not to invest, what to trust, what not to trust. Come on! What to buy, what not to buy. Hallelujah! Right? So when you trust God, what happens? Wherever you put it in, it will multiply. God wants to bless you. He wants to make your life easier. Right? So if you don't have to focus on that, your strength and energy can go to His work. Come on! Right? People say, how come why? Why am I so comfortable? Because God takes care of me. Amen! Amen. God takes care of me! Hallelujah! Right? Let's go on here. So three ways we are concluding here. Right? Final statement here. Right? Three ways to wait on God. Seek His counsel by pausing to pray. Right? Number two, be still and trust in God. Trust in Him. Amen. Right? Number three, when He says go, trust Him to work in the midst of your action. Yes. It's a three keys. Three keys. Right? The most important key in all of this is what? We have to learn to wait. Come on. We have to learn to wait. Right? We're coming to the conclusion of the year. We're going to have an awesome year next year. Yeah, I believe 2023, 2024, it's going to be some of the greatest years for the believers. Okay? I don't care what the world says. We do, not, we do not function according to the economic system of the world. Right? We do not function according to the political system of the world. Right? You know, a lot of countries, when they see the political parties change, they get all nervous. They put all their hope in men. Put all their hope in systems of government. Yeah. Guess what? Our hope is not there. Yes. That's not our hope. Our hope is in God. Amen. Right? The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15.10, my last scripture. 
I, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And the grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I work harder than any of them, though it was not me, but the grace of God that worked in me. Right? What did Paul say? What is Paul saying here? Paul is saying that I'm not a lazy Christian. I'm not a lazy Christian, right? Waiting doesn't mean that I do nothing. No. Right? I'm not a lazy Christian. I work as hard as I can. Right? People ask me often, why are you going to this country, that country? Because that assignment has been put on my life. And I consider that assignment an honorable privilege. As long as God sustains me, I'm going to run. I had an invitation two weeks ago to Africa, to Zambia. Big conference. You know, this man calling and praying and he said, you know, we want you to come. I told, you know, my wife about it and I said, you know, this. But I said, you know what? I just want to pray. He said, God is calling me. He said, God is opening the door. I was in Indonesia this last trip and one of the biggest doors in Indonesia opened to me. I was having a meal and the right side of my meal was sitting the Assembly of God Superintendent of the entire youth of Indonesia. His name is Pastor Daniel. Even last night he was texting me. You know, he has, I don't know how many churches of all the youth of Indonesia. And he just looked at me and he said, are you coming next year in June? I said, I'm not sure. Most likely. He said, I want you to speak to my youth. I have a big conference. And I was like, Lord, I'm 59, almost 60. You want to still speak to youth? You know, I'm questioning myself because I sometimes forget I'm 59. You know, especially when I'm among youth, I always forget. You know, you know. But as I was, I was contemplating that. I was thinking, isn't that amazing, right? The grace of God. The grace of God. How does the grace of God work, right? You are diligently serving to the best of your ability. God. Right? God doesn't work for people who sit around. I'm sorry, I don't care who the person is. He doesn't work for people who just wait and sit around. No! You put your best! You do your best for God's kingdom! And you know what he says? I will take care of everything else! Whatever else that you need, I will take care! Amen? So I pray that out of this teaching, simple teaching, but I pray this is what you will do. That from today, when you go back home, you make a decision, right? There's no decision I'm going to make without waiting on God. Amen. Right? I don't care how you made your decisions before, but from today, whether it's your school, right? Your life's choices, your goals, your ambitions, learn to wait on God. Make that a pattern. Make that a decision. Make that a priority. I'm going to set aside time. But there's 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 minutes. That's totally up to you. But I'm just going to quieten myself. And I'm going to say, Lord, these things I have to do today. How can I accomplish this? I'm going to empty my mind. I'm going to ask you. What do I do? Do I pause? Do I wait for you to move? Or as I move, you give me solution each step. Because my goal is to give you. Amen. Every